all I do, y todo lo que hacemos I honor you. porque queremos honrarte I wish that was something that we would do every day. Uh, yo desearía hacer algo cada día. With every action. Con cada acción. That we would honor you. Para honrarte solo a ti. With everything. En todas las cosas. Lord, that's the prayer of my heart today. Padre, esa es mi oración desde mi corazón en este día. That everything that we do in this service would honor you. Que todo lo que hagamos en nuestro servicio sea para honrarte. That your name would be lifted high. Que tu nombre sea exaltado. That you'd be glorified. Y que tú seas glorificado. And honored. Y honrado. Be made much of. Que seas tú solamente, Señor. Lord, it's all about you. Señor, es solamente acerca de ti. We love you. Que te amamos. We want this community to know you too. Queremos esta, que esta comunidad conozca de ti. And we're willing to do anything that you ask. Estamos so can, dispuestos a hacer todo lo que tú quieras. So we can reach. Para poder alcanzar. Each and every person. A cada persona. That does not know you. Que no te conocen. Lord, come into this place. Padre, ven a este lugar. May we not leave here the same. Probablemente no podemos decir. Work in our lives. Trabaja en nuestras vidas. Bring us closer to you. Tráenos cerca de ti. Help us to, to be more loving. Ayúdanos a ser más amorosos. And generous. Y generosos. And kind. Uh, y cuidadosos. Help us to, to, to love our neighbor. Ayúdanos a amar a nuestro prójimo. Help us to really care for those around us. Ayúdanos para que nos preocupemos por los otros. Lord, for those that are hurting. Aquellos que están dolidos. For those that are tired. Aquellos que están cansados. Or addicted. O aquellos que están en adicción. Bring freedom. Dales libertad. And healing. Sánalos. And joy. Y dales alegría. Lord, we love you. Padre, te amamos. And we pray these things in your name. Y damos gracias en tu nombre. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Puedes sentarse. So excited that you guys are here today. And we Estoy tan emocionado de que ustedes estén aquí. Pueden sentarse. We are... In the middle of our fall break, you guys enjoying the break? Estamos ya a la mitad de, de ya de que esté terminando este tiempo de descanso. Maybe for some of you it hasn't changed. Uh, tal vez para unos va como comenzando. But I hope you're enjoying your time. Pero yo espero que esté disfrutando este tiempo. So today we, we have this special treat of Pastor Claudia bringing us the word. So please uh, give her your attention. Así es que ponga mucha atención. Uh, also, just to, to, just to mention, we, we do offering here, but we don't necessarily do it publicly. <laughs> Dice, y algo que, que queremos mencionarles es que sí ofrendamos aquí, pero muchas veces no lo hacemos así como público. There is a box right out that door. Hay una caja ahí a la salida de la puerta. Y si tú quieres ofrendar, pues bueno, lo depositas ahí. Thank you. I appreciate that. Gracias, eh, agradecemos. Por But there's no pressure if you're pero no hay ninguna presión. All right. With that, Pastor Claudia. Amen. Uh, and I really know, I love to sing. I don't have a good voice, and my son, he is really um, trying to practice with me because he sings. But, and and uh, I'm not too good, but I, I love singing my God. Yeah, I need someone to translate. And, and maybe I'm going to back and forth, like Spanish and English, Spanish and English, so be patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to sing what I said, but translate in Spanish? Oh, no way. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, I'll do it. Thank you. 
como les de, we're gonna start again, I love to sing. Vamos a empezar a... Huh? You in Spanish and in English, so maybe I come back and forth. Oh, back and forth. Yes. So, well, I can do this part uh, by myself, but when we start in the message, you can translate to me. Okay. Bueno, me encanta cantar, pero en realidad no sé hacerlo muy bien. My son, he's always like trying to tell me what to do, but I'm not listening to him. <laughs> but I love, I, I really love this song, and I always put it in my heart. Me encanta esa canción, este canto que dice, How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, in every world we see. How great is our God. Can you say it with me? How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. In every world we see. How great is our God. Cuán grande es Dios. Cántale cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán. Cuán grande es Dios, cuán grande es Dios. Cántale cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán. Cuán grande es Dios. Amen. Um, I, when I start preaching, that's when you come. I'm gonna do my testimony and back and forth. Um, so I, I always think about like many years ago, like 20 years ago, I'm thinking, when somebody asks me about my testimony, what am I gonna say? Siempre dije 20 años atrás, when, cuando alguien me pregunte cuál es mi testimonio, ¿qué voy a decir? I was not on drugs. I never smoked. I didn't have any addiction. My family does together. My parents, they've been 50, they serve like 53 years anniversary together. My parents, they love us. We have, we are five kids and my parents, they're very good parents. We are not rich, but we're not poor. We have what we need. Y me preguntaba durante ese tiempo, ¿qué voy a decir cuando alguien me diga de mi testimonio si nunca estuve en drogas, ni siquiera fumaba, no tenía adicciones? Mis padres eran, son una pareja unida que llevan 53 años de casados, nos amaban, no éramos ricos, tampoco pobres, teníamos lo que necesitábamos. But I came to United States like 24 years ago. When I came here, I just, that's when my testimony started. Before? I don't understand what is the purpose of God for my life. I was happy. I have my parents, my mom, she's a preacher. And I got married, I have two kids, and we came to United States. It's nothing. I don't know if you guys know about the Hispanic culture. I don't know if you all know about the culture Hispanic, but we always came with nothing. And that's why I came with nothing. We don't have a uh, bed, we don't have nothing. We sleep in the carpet. Thank God, the United, uh, here in the United States, the bed don't have carpet because of now we live on the floor. But God is good. I never complain. But the first day that I came in the United States, I decided to be close to God. I know Jesus when I was seven years, seven years old. So, conozco a Jesús desde que tenía siete años de edad. And when I came here, I go like, God, 
I need you in my life. I, I need you. No matter what, where I am, I need you. And I think probably one private and Sunday I start looking for church. And if you ask me like 24 years ago, it was hard to find a Hispanic church. You did not see too much. But we find one and uh, close to downtown in Indianapolis. And we start going to church. I was so happy about it to find a Hispanic church. Yo era tan feliz de que había encontrado una iglesia hispana. And I remember Pastor Marvin, he take us to American church, English church. He translate that day and the Hispanic church came to that church and he started preaching and translate. When the service is almost done, cuando el servicio ya estaba a punto para terminar, estando en esa iglesia americana, el pastor dijo una cosa, dijo, si alguien quiere algo de parte de Dios, ese es el tiempo. And I remember the pastor, when he's almost finished the service, he said, if somebody, have some, if, if somebody wants something from God, this is the time. If you believe that you have faith, God's going to do it today. And I just go, God, so I don't speak English, I don't understand anything, but they have a translate. Someone is translating, and I said, God, I don't want anything. The only thing I want is I want to speak English. I want to understand if, if I'm here, I want to speak English. I want to listen what the people said. I, uh, I want to know. And I started walking in the, hawa in the hallway. And I just came to the altar. And I just believed with my heart. And I said, God, help me. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking for car. I'm not asking for anything. I just want to speak English. And I remember the pastor came and he put his hand on my head and he started praying and I just go thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus the service is done lo único que le pedía al Señor era que yo quería hablar inglés eso era lo único que yo quería el servicio terminó nos fuimos a la casa everybody going home and guess what happened the next day to my life. Somebody can guess? Alguien puede saber qué pasó el otro día que me desperté? You know what happened the next day? Nothing happened. I speak Spanish. Same thing. But you know what happened? When I started hear someone speak English, Something happened in my ears. I start feel kind of, I understand, like, easy. My ears make more sensitive to the English. I never went to school. I never have teacher there show me. This is this, or you said this, so my English is not perfect, no. And it's a lot of stuff that I don't know either but thank God for what he gave me. Mi inglés no es perfecto, pero le doy gracias a Dios por lo que me ha dado. Three months later, so, uh, someone gave me a flyer where they said it's going to be a dental free clinic. Someone gave me a flyer and they said it's going to be about to ser una Dentista gratis. You can have your teeth clean. And I go, what was the opportunity do I have? And I take my kids, my two kids in that time, and we went to that place where it's going to be a free clinic. 
we went and we are in the line and all the line that was only Hispanic people. And we just waiting and waiting. I just come like a little bit late and there's a lot of people in front of us. But nobody is taking us, only the doctor. And the people come, but the doctor, he don't understand what they want. And I remember the doctor, he is speaking, he has it, he said, is someone speak English? And nobody said anything. And I just go like, God, remember what I said? And he said again, is someone speak English? And I go like, I raise my hand. He said, come here, come here. When the doctor dijo, alguien que hable inglés, y yo levanté mi mano y dice, ven, ven, ven. And I went to the old phone, and he said, who you come with? And I go, two kids. Don't ask me how I said because I don't know how to say right now. I don't know what I said to the doctor, but he know I have two kids. He said, bring your kids, and I bring my kids. And we start to see all the patients, and I'm translate. So I'm not have even one year in the United States. And the doctor, he said, um, we start working with the patients. Uh, he did cleanings, extractions, and when we finished, he said, "Good job, glory to you, Lord." And you know what he said? I need someone like you to work in my office. And I go, "Oh no, 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 no! I'm not speaking English now." El doctor me dijo, "Oh, ne yo necesito a alguien como tú que trabaje." In my office, I said, oh, oh, no, no, no. Can I speak English at all? No. And he said, I understand what you said. And you understand me too. So you can come. And I go like, no, thank you. I can do that. And he said, here is my card, my business card. Just call me. And I go, no, I don't know. And I just went home and started praying. And I go, God. I don't want to speak English. How am I going to work? How am I going to translate if I'm not speaking English? I went and fui a la casa, comencé a orar, y le dije, Señor, ¿cómo yo voy a traducir si yo no sé inglés? But God told me, go. I just wait one week. And I just thinking, no, I can't call the doctor because he don't understand anything, and I don't know what I'm going to say. I just go into the office. And I went to the office for dentistry. And that time, that was Lingwood family. And I went, and I said, can I speak with Dr. Ball? And they said, yeah. He came back and said, hey. And I said, you remember me? He said, oh, yes. And he said, are you ready for work for me? I go, yes. And he said, okay, fill these papers and you can come next week. I was so scared. I almost cried every single day when I went to work. Because I go, God, I don't think this is my place. When I go home and cry, God, he said, yes, it's your place. So I've been working for them 23 years. I still working now. The amazing thing is that when the, the doctor, he noticed that I um, speak a little bit more English, he sent me to IDPY. He paid for all my classes. He paid for all my license. He paid for all my permits to be a dental assistant, expanding duties. I can do fillings. I can do cleanings. I can do. Who did it? Doctor? No. God did it. Because God is good. So what I'm learning about this is, is nothing is impossible for God. It's nothing impossible for God. I've been a pastor 17 years. Not everything has been good in my life. No, I've been having a real bad, bad things happen in my life. Because the enemy, the Satan, he's always going to come behind us to try to destroy try to kill us. And a lot of bad things happen in, our, in my life. But God, he's been good to me. His mercy is in my life. Dios ha sido tan bueno conmigo que a pesar de todas las cosas malas que han pasado en mi vida, 
Dios ha estado ahí conmigo. But I'm my pastor for 17 years in Richmond. But right now I have, we have two, three churches. I have assistant pastors, uh, everything in that area, Richmond, Union City, and Portland. But when I, when I start Union City, I don't know in American culture, but in Hispanic culture, be a woman and be a pastor is hard, it's not easy. Because Hispanic men, they the macho. They the ones said what to do. They not accepting the woman said something, or oh, do this, do that. So it was so hard. And there was people that is against the idea of God. Había gente que no aceptaba de que yo estuviera al frente por ser mujer. But the only thing I do is pray. I just pray, I say, God, I'm going to believe you and I'm going to trust in you. In Union City, we start with 10 people. And nothing happened. Church is not growing. I hear pastors, it's not growing. And I go, God, this is need to stop. We got to do something different. And I tell one day, tell the people, I said, we have to believe in God. We need to know that God had a purpose for us. Even if we are in a small town, because Union City is real small. Aunque era un, un pueblo muy pequeño, yo le decía a la gente, vamos a confiar en Dios. And I said, we are going to do something tonight. That's what I said to the church. I said, we're going to take a picture. Because we are small people, I said, but we're going to put it like, we're going to take chairs away, and we're going to put like this, and we're going to make like uh, our church look cool. And we're going to take a picture, and we're going to post it, because, you know, we're going to start to believe in God. Vamos a empezar a creer a Dios. Y vamos a postear esa foto, y vamos a decir, en nuestra iglesia pasan grandes cosas. And I tell the people, we're going to put it in Facebook, Every single one, they have to put it in Facebook and say, in our church, great things start happen. And we start and believe in God and the church is going to be full in the name of Jesus. And I said, now what we need to do is start talking good about our church. Because when you're talking good things about your church, people want to know what's going to happen in your church. But if you we in the church, and we start talking bad about our brothers or sisters. It's talking bad about the church. Nothing's going to happen. Nobody wants to come. When somebody, when you refer someone to the restaurant, they go because you say, oh, it's a good food. Good service. Oh, they treat you good. They give you what you want, and you say, oh, good, that's, that's what I need, and you go. Same thing with the church. I mean, we want to work, but God, he is the one going to bring the people. And what happened? After that, the church started growing. I don't understand how God's doing. I don't know, understand how God's doing it. Pero la iglesia comenzó a crecer. The church started growing. More people start coming and coming in the church. Our church, it was a small church. We are like enough for 60 people. But it wasn't the time where there's no more church for people. People has to be a stain because it's not enough. A lot of park, cars parking outside. It, it was not a space. Ya no había lugar para la gente. La gente desde afuera estaba, uh, they looking like this because it was not a space. And we said, well, we have to do something. We're going to make it, we thought about, we're going to make it bigger, we're going to do something, y pensamos, vamos a hacer algo más, y vamos a hacer la iglesia más grande. I don't know qué teníamos que hacer, but algo teníamos que hacer. Something we need to do, because they're not going to feed, and people left because it's not where they can feed, and they're not stay. But God gave us a bigger building. Three years ago, we bought a building. 
where we can feed like 200 people. But right now we are like sometimes 100, 120, 150. That's what we have in Union City. So God is good. But we have to believe. And that's what I tell at the beginning. If we really need, if we really want the something different happen in our lives, in our life, in our church, we have to do something different. If we continue to do the same thing, we're going to be always the same. We do things different. Si hacemos algo diferente, es cuando las cosas diferentes van a suceder en nuestra vida. And it's in, in every single thing that you practice, that you do, if you do the same thing, same things happen. But when we do something different, I said, nothing is impossible for God. Now I need you. Come here, Andy. Don't sleep, Andy. <laughs> I want to talk about the, cuando el rey David, when King David, hmm, estaba a punto de morir. He was up to the point that he was going to die. A little man, more loud. Just talk my loud. Oh, loud. Yeah, yeah. Cuando él, cómo él le dio unos consejos a su hijo. How he um, talked to his son. Le dio consejos. Gave him um, advice. Pero quiero que lean Segunda de Crónicas 2.5. Can you go to Second Corinthians 5? 2.5. 2.5. Y la casa que tengo. And the house that I have que edificar la casa que tengo que edificar the house that I need to build ha de ser grande it has to be big okay. porque nuestro Dios es grande because our Lord is great sobre todos los dioses over all the gods and I think about this verse. Can you, I'm sorry. Okay, yo puedo, uh, si quieres yo lo traduzco. <laughs> and I just think about this verse, and, y yo pienso en este versículo. Cuando dice en Segunda de Crónicas, the house that I need to build, la casa que tengo que hacer, it has to be big, because my God is great. And I think that's what we need to build in this church. Our house it has to be big because our God is great. And we, got, we have to set it one time, two times, three times, every day, every week, every month, every year. And we, ha we have to set it, but we have to believe it. Yo creo que tú hablas español, inglés. ¿Puedes traducir? ¿Crees que puedas traducir o no? Okay, ven, ayúdame. Sí puedes traducir de ahí si quieres, sí. Dale, micro. Tengo más suficiente. Okay, suficiente alta. Good, I like that. Entonces, este versículo tiene que ser nuestro lema. Que esta iglesia será grande. Porque nuestro Dios es grande. Y este lema es por el cual tenemos que trabajar. La iglesia del Señor o nosotros somos los que nos tenemos que encargar de hacerlo realidad. Y esto no significa que solo tengo que venir a la iglesia. Y es lo suficiente que tengo que hacer. Sino que es más. Requiere más trabajo. Alcanzar a personas 
para que puedan ser parte de la fe de la iglesia. Y que ellos puedan ser parte de nuestra familia en Cristo. Y tenemos que, hay actitudes, perdón, que tenemos que traer. O actitudes que tenemos que cambiar que necesitamos para que esta visión se haga realidad. Porque esta visión no es de Pastor Nathan, no es de la pastora Claudia, es una visión de parte de Dios. Dios se la puso a Pastor, el Pastor la comparte conmigo, And God's gonna help you. Dios nos va a ayudar para hacerlo realidad. Pero tenemos que creerlo. Y tenemos que unirnos para que verdaderamente eso suceda en nuestra iglesia. Dijo además el rey David a su hijo Salomón, cuando estaba a punto de morir. Era algo, y yo no sé usted, pero casi siempre hemos oído que cuando alguien está a punto de morir, llama a sus hijos. Because, y le quiere decir las últimas palabras. Y fue lo que pasó con el rey David. Le dijo sus últimas palabras a Salomón. Y lo podemos encontrar en Primera de Crónicas. The first chronic, 28, 19 and 20. Y le dijo estas palabras. Anímate. Esfuérzate. Y pon manos a la obra. Anímate, esfuérzate y pon manos a la obra. ¿Por qué el rey David le estaba diciendo eso a su hijo? Because él sabía que iba a pasar por estas situaciones. Entonces le estaba enseñando cuál era la actitud que él tenía que tener. Animarse. ¿Cuántas veces no nos hemos sentido desanimados? Que sentimos que las cosas no van a funcionar. Que decimos, oh, yo no sé si esto me va a gustar. El Señor te dice, anímate, anímate. ¿Sabe cómo lo vamos a hacer? You, you think this is going to be a little bit crazy. But I'm Hispanic and I know. Usted va a pensar que esto es un poco loco, pero I'm Hispanic. Yo soy hispana y lo sé. Because estamos esperando tal vez nosotros como hispanos traigamos a más hispanos but you know what is the truth pero yeah, you can about them. Pero, pero sabe cuál es la verdad did you like American yeah no 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 you like American talk to the Hispanic Like you, the speaking, you say, oh, I'm going to go to come to my church. Yeah. Well, even, even they not speak English, but you have a car. People, Hispanics, we need to feel like welcome in the American church. Because usually we looking for something like where I feel comfortable. And sometimes, yeah, a veces pensamos como, ah, no me van a aceptar. 
But if you go with them, y tú les dices, te invito, te invito a mi iglesia. Even they not speak English, they're going to understand church. They're going to understand church. We know church. We know what a church means. You like a make and say, oh, no, maybe I'm not going to say, I'm not going to talk to them. But if it, they feel welcome, tú los estás animando. Y es por eso que dice, anímate. Anímate. Probablemente dice, oh, no, yo no voy a poder. Yes, you can. Anímate. También el rey David le dijo, esfuérzate. Esfuérzate. Pero yo no voy a... Tenemos que esforzarnos. Tenemos que trabajar. Algo diferente tenemos que hacer. Tal vez llevar tarjetitas y nada más pasársela. Y que diga, bilingual service. And they're going to feel, oh, they want me there. La gente hispana ama a la gente americana. De verdad. Maybe you feel like no. Pero es que a veces somos shy. Es por eso que siempre, oh, no me quiere. But we really love you. Amamos a la gente americana. Entonces tenemos que esforzarnos, hacer algo diferente. Invita a la gente aunque no la conozcas. Todos queremos que ellos conozcan a Jesús. Pero no lo van a conocer por sí solos. Alguien tiene que presentarlos. Dios nos usa a nosotros. Usa nuestros pies, nuestras manos, nuestra boca, para que el reino de Dios crezca. Y también le dijo David a su hijo, pon manos a la obra. Es easy to be like this. Somebody else can do it. Pastor Claudia can do it. Alguien que lo haga. No tú lo haces. I can do it. Everybody, todos tenemos que hacerlo. Tenemos que trabajar para la obra de Dios. Y hay algo que me encanta que le dijo también. Don't be afraid. Eso le dijo a su hijo Salomón. Don't be afraid. A veces estamos todos espantados. How gonna, ¿Cómo le voy a hablar? ¿Qué voy a decir? Y yo no puedo. Eso es lo que el enemigo nos dice. No puedo. Te quieres tener sentado. Con los brazos cruzados. Con que tú vengas a la iglesia, con eso está bien. But he, God said, nosotros no tenemos que ser así. Tenemos que traer a otros a que conozcan de él, a que alcancen la salvación. Entonces, es nuestro trabajo traer 
a la gente a Cristo. Así como alguien lo hizo con nosotros para que alcanzáramos la salvación, así también nosotros tenemos que ser la esperanza para otros. Y pedirle al Señor que Él sea el que nos ayude para poder amar a nuestros vecinos. Ama a su vecino. Ama a su vecino. Dice la palabra de Dios. ¿Qué recompensa tiene que tú ames a los que te aman? Ninguna. Es no recompensa. Porque tú los amas, ellos te aman, that's good. No hay ninguna recompensa. Pero dice la palabra que cuando tú amas a tu enemigo, grande recompensa tendrás. Even you not like the people. Aunque no te guste la gente. Comienza a amar. Comienza a invitar. Comienza a creer lo que Dios va a hacer en esta casa. Tenemos que creerlo. Hermanos, esto es por fe. Esto es por fe. No tenemos que dejarnos llevar por vista, sino por fe. Dios tiene poder. Y su poder es inmenso. Va de, pero que da, ¿de qué tamaño está nuestra fe? Tenemos que creer en Dios. Y creer que Dios tiene un propósito para esta casa. Pero tiene que empezar con nosotros. Así es que no dejes de creer. Únete a la visión. Comienza a invitar a otros. Comienza a decir, tenemos servicio bilingüe. Start reaching people. Dice la palabra que nosotros vamos a sembrar. Pero Dios se va a encargar de que esto crezca. Así, así es que no te preocupes, dejemos todo en las manos de Dios y comencemos a creer en ese propósito de Él. Quizás ahorita todavía no le estamos viendo como la estructura. Like a, we singing, but we not, uh, kind of we go like, oh, okay, ¿para dónde voy? Like where I need to go, I'm singing, I'm not singing, I'll be this or this. No sabemos. We don't know. Pero Dios va a ir acomodando todo. Pero hay que creerle a Dios. Hay que creerle a Dios. Dice la palabra que si tuvieras fe, como un grano de mostaza, mostaza, Pequeñita, you and I even can see. Because it's so tiny. Pero si nuestra fe fuera así de pequeña. Dice que tú le dices a ese monte, muévete. Y se moverá. Dios lo hace. Pero con nuestra fe. I can believe in God. He creído en Dios y Él verdaderamente ha hecho cosas grandes en mi vida. Que si yo pudiera contar todo lo que ha pasado en mi vida, realmente no habría tiempo. 
por eso fue que les dije unas poquitas cosas de las cosas que Dios ha hecho en mi vida. Pero es mucho más que Él ha hecho en mi vida. Lo único que Dios está pidiendo de nosotros es la fe. Y nosotros no vamos a cambiar a nadie. Yo no puedo decirle, tienes que cambiar. O, o yo no sé si alguien te ha dicho, o oh, tú nunca vas a cambiar. Sigues actuando de la misma manera. Pero nosotros no vamos a cambiar a nadie. El que cambia es Dios. Cuando tenemos la fe y cuando le entregamos nuestro corazón a Él. Dios se encarga de cambiar las cosas. Y dice su palabra que los planes que nosotros tenemos no son los planes de Dios. Podemos tener muchos planes y podemos decir, si Dios quiere. Pero déjame decirte que Dios sí quiere. Lo único que está necesitando que nosotros demos el primer paso y que digamos sí al Señor. Entonces tenemos mucho trabajo que hacer, pero empieza con nosotros. Así es que tenemos esta oportunidad aquí en esta casa de hacer lo que dice la palabra. Esta iglesia es grande porque mi Dios es grande. Esta iglesia es grande porque mi Dios es grande. ¿Lo puede decir conmigo? ¿Puede decirlo conmigo? Why you not stand up and we're going to hacer it together. Esta iglesia es grande. English. This church is big because my God is great. Can we say it again? This church is great. Amen. How many believe in this? We have to believe. And great things is going to happen. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. In everyone we see. How great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, in everyone we see, how great is our God, cuán grande es Dios, cántale cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán, cuán grande es Dios, cuán grande es Dios, cántale cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán cuán grande es Dios thank you Jesus theme oh. if I see one theme uh, flowing through today It's that we are different. De, que, que somos diferentes. That God calls us to be different. Pero Dios nos ha llamado para ser diferentes. And he calls us to be more. Y nos ha llamado para ser más. Today we get to take communion. Hoy vamos a tomar la, eh, eh, a la Santa Cena. Together as one church. Uh, juntos como una sola iglesia. Because Jesus did something different for us. Porque Jesús hizo algo diferente por nosotros. Something unexpected. Algo que nosotros no nos esperábamos. 
He came to this earth él vino a esta tierra to give up his life a dar su vida for us, for you, por ti, por nosotros, for the church, por la iglesia, for those outside the church, por aquellos que están fuera de la iglesia, for those walking down the road, por aquellos que están caminando en las calles, for everyone, por todos. God so loved the world, Dios vino por todo el mundo. That he gave his one and only son, él nos ha dado su único hijo. That whosoever su único hijo in him, y todo aquel que crea en él perish, dice será salvo o será alcanzado but have eternal life. pero dice se tendrá la vida eterna And that's why we're called to be different. y por eso hemos sido llamados a ser diferentes Because Jesus was different. porque Jesús es diferente He calls us to be set apart. Él nos ha hecho parte de Él to be holy. para que fuéramos santos And that's what different means. y eso es la diferencia es holy eso es lo que significa diferente ser santo We're different. somos diferentes We are in the world, estamos en el mundo but not of it. pero no estamos fuera del mundo And Jesus calls us to something more. y el Señor nos está llamando a hacer más Él lo ha hecho en los ministerios en esta tierra to reach each and every person para estar alcanzando a cada persona that felt different, que sea diferente que se no the same que se, no se sienta de la misma manera As anybody else. A, a cualquier otro. He reached the least, the last, and the lost. He ha alcanzado a, hasta el último. Those who felt far from God. Aquellos que se han sentido fuera de Dios. He went close to. Él fue cerca de ellos. He loved them. Les amó. He had dinner with them. Se ha identificado con ellos. He sat at a table. Uh, los ha sentado en la mesa. And they had something in common. Y tiene algo en común. They're the same. Son los mismos. They're different. No son los mismos, son diferentes, perdón. Which is good. Pero eso es bueno. It's holy. Es santo. And true. Y verdadero. So if I could have a couple people come up, I, I think I forgot a couple. Um, Darren and Elmer. That'd be great. We're going to pass out the elements today. Vamos a pasar los elementos. Take one out of each one. Please pass them out. Please hold on to them as, as they pass them out and we'll take it all as one. Dice, uh, va a tomar usted uno y lo vamos a tomar todos juntos. So this is what Jesus did for us. Eso es lo que Jesús hizo por nosotros. That he gave his life. Él nos dio su vida. On the cross. En la cruz. And he laid it down. Él, no, él dio su vida por nosotros. Not that anybody took it from him. No que alguien la tomó de él. But he gave himself up. Sino él mismo se dio por nosotros. To die. Para a morir. For us. For our nosotros, salvation. Por nuestra salvación. One of the things we do here at Southview. Una de las cosas que hacemos aquí en esta iglesia. Is practice open table. Es uh, practicamos una mesa abierta. You don't have to be a member of our church. Tú no tienes que ser un miembro de nuestra iglesia. But if you know Jesus. Pero si tú conoces a Jesús. Or if you even want to make a decision of today that, that, that you want to follow Jesus. O, o tal vez si quieres tomar hoy la decisión de seguir a Jesús. You are welcome to take this communion. Tú eres bienvenido para tomar esta uh, santa cena. We believe this is a symbol of his body. Es, nosotros creemos que este es el ejemplo de su cuerpo. And his blood su sangre that was broken que fue derramada and was filled out fue derramada for our salvation por nuestra salvación so jesus in the upper room y entonces jesus he took the bread él tomó el pan he took the cup tomó el pan y tomó la copa and he took the bread and he broke it Dice que tomó el pan y lo rompió, lo partió. And he said, Take and eat. Y tómalo y come. In remembrance of me. En memoria de mí. 